God, you're worthy. God, you are mighty. Come on, let's let them hear our voices this morning. God, we need you this morning like never before. Oh, God, just, just take a moment. Just drink that in. Oh, God, just drink that in. God, you're so worthy. It's all of you, Lord God. Even in this moment, Lord God, thank you. And in this moment, Lord God, we just give you praise. We just open up our mouth and we just give you praise, Lord God. We just say thank you for this opportunity, Lord God. Thank you to be in your presence, Lord God, like never before. Lord, we don't take it for granted that we are here. We take nothing for granted. And we take not for granted that we need you second by second by second. So God, we just thank you right now. I just lift my hands and I surrender to you, Lord God. All of you, Lord God, all of you, use me in a mighty way, Lord God. Lord, we're sitting here waiting upon you. Holy Spirit, you're so welcome in this moment. You know every life that is in this room. You know every heart that is in this room. You know every mind that is in this room. You know exactly what needs to be heard. Let them hear the words behind the word, Lord God, as they are encouraged today. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Come on and shout hallelujah in the place. You can do a little bit better than that. I'm going to shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> okay, because I'm shouting hallelujah because he's the Lord God who helpeth me. Amen? Amen. So, yeah, if you want to be quiet about the hallelujah that you give, that's on you. But I'm going to take about another 30 seconds and go ham. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Woo. Glory to God. We here. Yeah. Look, don't, don't, don't take for granted that moment you can open up your mouth and say, Lord, I thank you. Don't take for granted that you can open up your mouth and say, Lord, I need you. Don't take for granted that this is just another regular Wednesday. I think I said that every Wednesday that I come. This ain't no regular Wednesday. Amen. Amen. Well, you may be seated. Hello out there, the Well Changers Nation. How are you? We're so grateful that you are in the building with us today. And even before I get started, I just want to give a thank you to Pastor Dollar and Pastor Tappy, the best pastors in the entire world. Yeah. That was a good pity pat, but I just want to say, God, thank you for Pastor Dollar and Pastor Tappy. Right? For their lives, for their strength, for their health, for everything that they give us every single week. Yes? Man, I, sometimes I'm like, I, and I'm sure y'all say it too, I have no idea where I would be lest it not been that they decided to keep trusting the Lord, to keep pushing forward, right? To keep obeying God moment by moment by moment. So I just say, God, thank you, and we just honor them so very much for who they are in our lives. So I'm Pastor Alyssa, and you know, I got this blue here for a reason, because I'm a bit animated. Is that all right? But today, I just wanted to walk through something, because, I mean, after Grace Life Conference, did anybody attend Grace Life Conference? I mean, I know it was amazing for you guys. I'm sure it was amazing for those of you that attended. We were on the teen side, and it just went ham. You know, you got youth pastors coming out of Challenger cars, riding through the church. Don't tell nobody. They, these kids are like hands in the air, worshiping God every night. Healing, so, and, and I understand that healing was happening on this side. Healing was happening on the other side too. How about that? Isn't that amazing how the Spirit of God will do that? And then we, you know, we messed around and, and had a moment to be able to sit in the women's ministry. I heard that the men had their thing happening too. But doggone it, you know, that, that radical ministry moment was just amazing. Thank God for Pastor Taffy and the guests that came. And, you know, we just got unleashed. Yeah. <laughs> we got unleashed. So that's probably what you're going to see today. Is that all right? That's probably all right. So I feel a bit more unleashed um, with this right here because today I'm talking about fake ID versus grace ID. 
Wow, I know, right? I said the same thing. When I got it, I was like, really, Lord? He was like, yeah. Fake ID. Anybody got their license? I got, anybody got a license? Here's mine. And here's my picture, right? And it says who I am. It says my address. You know, the weight is, you know, praise God for that. <laughs> All right. It, it's, it's coming. Amen. But on here, literally, anybody can find me. They can find my blood type is on here. That's just how specific it is, right? This is the ID that I can present, right, and get in somewhere. I can pay, I can pay my bills with, with having this, right? It's, it's absolutely amazing. So as you think about that, just think about the power of an ID, the power of what can be presented, right, or not, or not. And so I'm talking about fake ID versus grace ID. And listen, I know that I am an encourager, and that's what I do, OK? I'm just going to give it the way I give it and bless God on that. Hold on to your seats. Is that okay? So here's the thing. In this world, so many things try to define us. Would you agree? agree? And often, we end up showing up sometimes as we're not. Often, we end up showing up not in our true identity, who God has created us to be. Hold on. People are like, yeah, girl, you're right. No, hold on, let me, let me get it out. But there is a true identity that God has given us, an identity wrapped in his grace. Everybody say grace. grace. Now, I wore my Grace Gang t-shirt today. So every time you see me do this, you'll be like, Grace Gang, so I'm practice. Grace. That was a little weak. Grace. All right, act like you in it, act like you in it. We will talk about the types of fake IDs we present. The reasons we sometimes present a fake ID or identity. How we can embrace our true identity in Jesus Christ and the power we have in owning and presenting a grace ID versus a fake ID. And I was like, Lord, you know, don't, don't, you know, you don't have to worry about getting hung up on the slides. I did want to bring a little animation to it, right? But I was like, you know, why is this so powerful? It's because the identity is one of the main things that the enemy wants to destroy. Because, you know, if, if you mess around and let your identity go, it messes around and messes up with your belief. And if you mess around with your belief, well, doggone, what do we have? You understand what I'm saying? Like, if you don't stand in all of who you are in the way that God created you to be, then your mind starts going down a path that it wasn't meant to go. Does that make sense? So here we go. Here we go. And you know, it shows up sometimes in many different ways. But even before we get into the fake IDs versus the grace IDs, understand that the enemy got a whole plan in how he wants to attack our ID, our identity in Christ. Three ways. He is a deceiver. Everybody say he's a deceiver. <laughs> he is a accuser. And he is a distractor. You got to keep that in your mind. When you wake up every single day and trials and tribulations are happening, you have to remember that, wait a minute, the enemy got a whole thing in play for me. And he's got three ways that he wishes to do it. I looked at John 8, and said he couldn't stand the truth because there wasn't a shred of truth in him. We're talking about the enemy. When the liar speaks, he makes it up out of his lying nature and fills the world with lies. Like, that's what he's doing. Understand what I'm saying? Like, don't get it twisted about what's happening every single day. He's on his mission. He knows his job, and he does it very well. You understand? And then he's an accuser. I was looking at Zechariah 3 and 1. I'm not the theologian person, right? But when I was reading through, I was like, okay, this is pretty serious. It talked about how, you know, God changed the garments of Joshua. And he was, you know, they were doing their thing. But it says, next, the messenger angel showed me the high priest Joshua. He was standing there before God's angels where the accuser showed up to accuse him. Now, I got the other stuff, but the one thing that I saw in this, I was like, you know what? That joker, the enemy, he will show up anywhere. He don't care who he's in front of. Now, we're talking about the high priest and God and the angels. And he decided to stand up there and be like, <laughs> you know he's filthy. Look at the clothes he got on. You know he a hot mess, God. And how about he's trying to do the same thing 
to you. You know, it's a hot mess. You know she can't put two and five together without some help. And you know what? Here's me on the other side again. Lord, you know I am. Lord God. But the enemy shows up every single day to try to accuse me and you of who I'm not. Somebody could say amen to that. And then he's a distractor. Good Lord, someone say distractor. distractor. Say it louder. Distractor. Listen, scripture, 2 Corinthians eleven fourteen, And I got a lot of scripture. You know what I'm saying? And you'll probably see why. Because here's the thing. I can't, I can't really describe it any other way than, than basing it through the word of God. You understand what I'm saying? So here we go. It says, and no wonder Satan does it all the time, dressing up as a beautiful angel of light. That joker will show up and influence others. He will influence situations. He will influence circumstances and make it seem like what it's not and not what it is. He will try to show up like he's blue and it's really red. He'll try to make you think that it's white and it's blue. You understand what I'm saying? And here's the thing. That distraction thing can almost take you out. Let me give you an example. Four weeks ago, I think it was about, well, let's start, May 25th. My family and I are driving home, ba, 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 happy, doing our thing, praising God, having a good time. We had just come from Pastor Constance's daughter uh, graduation celebration. We were excited. Next thing we know, we're driving. We're probably like seven minutes from the house. Drive there. Pretend like you're driving with me. Drive, drive. We driving, we moving, we shaking, we baking. <laughs> okay, that's that. Boom! In the back, woo! Comes a car. I, my body goes like this and back. The seatbelt take, almost takes my breath out. In the back is my son and my daughter. My husband is able to hold onto the wheel and then we get pushed a little bit further. How many of you know that could have been a whole situation? How about, I'm just going to go and say, it probably would have been one of those situations where I really wasn't supposed to be standing here right now. But I am. So this message that's coming out is coming out like it's coming out for a whole lot of reasons. And, you know, my husband ran down to the driver my daughter is standing here with me. My son is, is with, my hu- with my husband. And he ran to the driver. He was like, hey, man, you okay? You know, what's going on? Da, da. He said, I just lost control of the car. He said, I just lost control of the wheel. I had been having tra- problems with my car before, but I just lost control of the wheel. Wow. What? You what? <laughs> now, I might have to tell you, this is the second time that my family and I have been all together in a car accident together. That was May 25th. So I'm walking through it, my body and my mind, my soul, my spirit, right? And, and you know what's coming up, Grace Life Conference. Yeah. <laughs> we got, you know, the weeks are coming. We, you know, the, the tally has been coming, 300 students registered. Then it goes to 500 students. Then it goes to 600 students. You know, the numbers are coming in. Okay, Lord, and we're preparing. We're, we're, we're doing our thing. Then, for, and so here's, here's the other part. What was great, what was a powerful thing, in four weeks' time, the Lord replaced that car. I never bought a car so fast in my life. And here we go, go. This past week, right? <laughs> we driving, same car, new car, new wheels, new everything. We driving, we driving, we moving, we moving. Pum, pum, pum. Here's the other part I gotta tell you. I'm in the back seat, <laughs> uh, working on my message for the day I have to preach in Grace Life. Next thing you hear, tire blows out. What? Yeah. What? So long story short on that, we pull off, we get to the gas station, we were right at the exit, a few minutes from work, right at the exit, right? Things start happening where it just so happened that a tow truck was sitting at the gas station we were at. He was like, oh, I'll take you. He takes us eight minutes up to a... uh, uh, tire place, get the car fixed, boom, boom, I'm on my way. But let me tell you what the distraction was trying to do. It was trying to get me off track and get me into my emotions and get me into, oh, God, I don't know. I just bought the car. Huh? 
how about the man told us how much the car was, the, the, the tire was, and I just said, oh, that's good, swipe, swipe, poo! Because he caused increase in my life. What are you talking about? What are you talking about? So I had to catch up. I had to catch it real quick. And here's what I started doing. I started preaching my message right on, 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 on live. I went live, yeah? I went live, right? Hey! I, I started telling all the people, started preaching the message right then. Oh, you think you're coming for me? No, sir. But he is a distractor. He will influence situations and circumstances to get you off track of what God has called you to do. I don't care how big or how small. He's got things in play. Anytime you present yourself less than who God created you to be or called you to be, that, my friend, is a fake ID versus a grace ID. Got a few people that I want you to meet because here's the thing. It can show up, you know, sometimes the people that show up with situations and circumstances, now I'm going to go ahead and put a disclaimer out. I know that none of the things I'm about to present are you. Hold off on Down and Danny. Put it back to the other slide. I want to show you one real quick. I said, you know, if I'm going to jump in, I might as well jump in real quick. Come on, Constance. So, you know, situations, circumstances coming. And again, I'm not talking to you, right? Or you, all of the thousands of people watching online right now. Amen? All right. So, you know, and again, sometimes our personalities want to rise up versus who God is on the inside of us rising up. And so, you know, suppose you, and this again, it's not you. You are that worker at work, right? Okay. You come in, you always mad. No matter what, we say good morning, you mad. We say, can I help you? You mad. So here's what it looks like. Hi, good morning, cousins. How are you? Can you bring it down some? I would just want, I bought you some coffee, and I just, I just wanted to bring you some coffee. I don't even drink coffee because it make my stomach hurt. No, sir, you should have asked me. If you was going to do something, I, you should have just asked me what I want. Okay, I, I, I was going to ask you, but I figured I would be like, surprise. You know, I figured yeah. you'd be happy. No, thank you. Just angry. And, you know, sometimes that angry person, and this is nobody here, and I know we only know people like this. Sometimes the words that come out of their mouth be the wrong type of words, like them words that you know you, and you be trying, right? That, you know, that person be trying, 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 and then those words start turning in. You say, good morning, can you, and um, I just wanted to bring you some coffee right now, and the words that come out of their mouth, not boo! <laughs> you know, and you just be trying to have a regular conversation, but you show up and it's like, you know, you're just trying to share the word of the Lord with them, and it's like, you know, I just wanted Please to get a leave me the that cusser come out, nobody in here, right? Amen. Give that praise for the cusser. <laughs> All right. I know that's nobody in here. But here's the thing. The reason that the, and, and, and as we walk through the personalities or the emotions that come up that I'm explaining, I want to give us a reason why. So as things present, we are now aware. Amen. So here's the thing. That cusser that comes out, every conversation you have, is filled with cuss words, or every conversation they have is filled with cuss words. Even to the point, you know how there's some people that cuss, they cuss like real good, like they do it eloquently, you know what I'm saying? Like they could just like A, B, C, D, E, F, G, put that word together, almost to the point where you be like, for real? <laughs> you be like, yeah, you be wanting to jump in too. But sometimes the cuss, you, as a Christian, the person who God created in his image and his likeness, when you do it, it don't come out right. <laughs> you cuss, and your cuss, be making the people that cuss real good, you make them uncomfortable. Would they be like, yo, bro, like, no. <laughs> like, don't, uh-uh, yo, you can't do it like us, you know what I'm saying? Like, you can't, like, no, don't, just, just speak regular. <laughs> just speak regular, don't cuss, please. Right, but here's the thing, you do that, because you might feel that this gives you an edge or helps you express yourself. But actually, it's masking deeper frustrations or insecurities. Instead of just showing up in what the situation is at that time and then being able to see maybe God send a laborer across your path to maybe minister to you or vice versa. Here's what the scripture says, and this one is not up there, but Ephesians 4 and 29, it says, watch the way you talk. Let nothing foul or dirty come out of your mouth. Say only what helps each word a gift. Somebody say, I need to say a gift every time I speak. And you know, sometimes, come back, Constance. 
sometimes, and I know this is not nobody out here. <laughs> or up there, we love you. <laughs> but, uh, Geraldine the gossiper. Girl, you see Brother Hurd. Uh huh. Girl, you know I saw him over in front of Walmart talking to 50,000 folks. Ain't uh, he married? Yeah, he married, girl. Ooh. You know what I'm saying? And I was like, whoa, so you just going to come into Sunday church and speak to the children like that? Or you just going to be coming and preaching to ch in children's ministry? I think it's because he lost all that weight and so he's right. looking he nice. Right, he think he right, right. You know what I'm saying? You think he like all the way live, you know what I'm saying? But he all the way live, you know what I'm saying? He ain't even all the way, he ain't even all the way that. He ain't even all the way that. <laughs> But th these are presents. Am I lying? No. She said, girl, no. Right, give me a high five in the air, girl. You understand what I'm saying? That gossiping person, Geraldine, the gossiper. But let me tell you why. You show up as a gossiper, gossiper, because maybe others talked about you. Maybe you've been hurt by the words of others, and now you gossip as a defense mechanism or a way to fit in. Maybe. I love the scripture when I found it. Proverbs 16, 28. It says, troublemakers start fights. Gossip breaks up friendships. Anybody ever had a friendship broken up by something that was not true, that was said? I know I have. And it took a long time for me to get over it. Then there's that doubt and Danny. All right? Doubt and Danny. Because sometimes we present emotionally, even though God may have shared some things with us to do, now, you remember what I'm saying? Anything, at any time, you present anything less than who God called you to be or anything different than how he created you to be, it is fake. Do you understand that? You got to let that be the, 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 the fine line that's going through all of this. Doubt and Danny. Here goes Doubt and Danny. Let me tell you about him. He, I'm, here, I got to make a call. He's up there. Hello, Conscious? Hey, yeah, it's me, Danny. Uh-huh. Yeah, I just wanted to talk to you about something because I feel the Lord taught me to do something, and I just was trying to figure out what I need to do. Uh-huh. Yeah, he told me to feed the homeless. Yeah. Should I? I, I don't know. I was, oh, yeah, just do what he said. Oh, yeah, yeah, I know he, I, I know he said do what to do. I know God said to do it, but I'm just checking. Do you think I should? Right, right. I was just wondering, you know, I was wondering, will the homeless people show up? Will they be hungry? Uh-huh. I was just trying. Okay, hello? What, hello? H hello? H hello? Oh, you pray that prayer. God, I know that you are there. I know that you are present. Amen? And I just say, God, you know, I know that you told me to do these things, Father God, but I just pray right now, Lord God. Lord, will you show up uh, for me? I know you'll show up, Lord. I know you showed up for the Hebrew boys, but will you show up, God, for me? Amen? And then you get up off your bended knee and you still doubt and, you know, people come up to you, praise God, you're going to do that? Yeah, praise God. <laughs> yeah, praise God, I'm going to do it. God, should I? Should I? Doubting Danny. Here's the reason that we doubt or we show that fake idea of doubt is because we tr struggle to trust God's promises fully. Life's challenges and unanswered prayers make us question his faithfulness. Could you imagine? Make us question his faithfulness. But he's been faithful. Yeah. But the enemy circumvent situations sometimes, circumstance, to make you doubt his faithfulness. Look at James 1 and 6, and I'm reading from the message version. It says, ask boldly, believingly, without a second thought. Do you know without, what a, without a second thought how fast that is? Without a second thought, like immediately, just go. Without a second thought, People who worry their prayers, here's what it said in the Bible, I didn't say this, and I'm reading a message. It says, people who worry, their prayers are like wind-whipped waves. Ain't that a trip? And then there's fearful Freddy. <laughs> that fear, nobody in here operates in fear at any time, any sir. it's just me. It's just me walking up on the stage over here like, God, won't you do it? Oh, it's just me? Okay. All right, we're going to work with that. But feel for Freddie, like everything, you just said, well, I, oh, Lord, oh, my God, every, every single sound, every tinkling symbol, you are afraid. 
No matter what, it could be the slightest thing. You're just afraid. Afraid to go outside. Afraid to walk the dog. Afraid to go to sleep. Afraid to wake up. <laughs> You're just fearful. Fearful Freddie. You see Freddie sitting up in the corner? Like, Freddie dressed up just to go to work. He too fearful to even go to work. These are real things. Because the enemy will have your mind so twisted, having you think that situations and circumstances are already set up for you that are not even there. Here's the word, 2 Timothy 1 and verse 7. And I said I got a lot of scripture because here's the thing. Why not renew our minds quickly in the word of God so that now when situations and circumstances show up, we stand in all of who God called us to be and in the way he created us to be. Anything less is a fake identity. My God. Versus a grace identity. 2 Timothy 1, verse 7, God doesn't want us to be shy with his gifts. Now, this one hit home for me. It says, God doesn't want us to be shy with his gifts, but bold and loving, and here's the part, and sensible. Look, don't be showing up just, you know, doing the absolute, it's my gift. I'm operating in my gift. He said also sensible, but the other part that he said is, is show up bold. Show up as he is. God is not lame. Did you hear what I said? Amen. All right, I'm just checking. Then there's another one, another emotion that may show up. Shameful Sam. Ooh, 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 ooh. Shameful Sam. Because of what he did in his life as a teenager. He's 42 years old and still living in that shame. He can't even put, he can't even get it together. He comes into the house of the Lord and he just sits in the corner. He sometimes may want to raise his hand, but he can't even raise his hand. He can't even give God glory because what's playing, that story is playing over and over and over in his mind. Is that anybody in here? I know several times it has been me. That shame, it just overtakes you to the point where it almost feels like it is crushing you. But the reason that the shame shows up is because we are haunted by past mistakes and sins. Here's the thing, feeling unworthy of God's love and forgiveness. Immediately we have to, re you know, rebuke the enemy and go right to the truth. Amen. I am forgiven. Yes. Yes. But how quickly sometimes, because that story seems stronger than the forgiveness of God. That story will seem stronger than the forgiveness of God. That's why it's such a fake ID. Here's the thing. When you present these IDs, right, you're presenting something that is fake for a temporary situation. You want a temporary fix. Let me tell you what, how the shameful person moves into. What happens with that shameful person, and this, not, this one is not up here, but what happens is you become a shrinking violet. Meaning that because of the shame and the thing, the story that keeps running around in your head, you show up small. Come on, Constance. You show up super small. Like, you know that you're full of God. You know that you're full of everything that God has called you to be. But when people come up to you, you show up so small, we can't even hear your good morning. We can't even hear you say hello. Hey, Constance. Hey, do you want to go and, um, you know, we've got to go serve in children's ministry. What? <laughs> what? Don't you feel like you're the one that's called? Like, we're about to go get it. For... What? What? <laughs> Goodbye. I can't. You, you know what? You show up so small, but here's the trick of the enemy. You show up small, right? That's a temporary fake ID. Temper, it's a fake ID. What you're looking for is comfort to be okay in this. Amen. You understand what I'm saying? You're putting this out here. It's not really you, but you're putting it out there hoping that you'll get a temporary fix of comfort. Wow. 
And the enemy is like, yeah, stay right there. Stay in that. Show up small. Show up less than who God created you to be. And opportunities will pass you by. People will pass you by. The ones that God called you to will pass you by. Because you're talking like this, hey, are you, you ready to? And you know, we think that's cute. We think that's humble. And it's not. It's a lie against the truth of the word of God. Does that make sense? And some people call it shy. I'm just shy. That's a lie. Let me tell you why it happens. You show up small in your personality because of what may have happened to you at the hands of someone else. Past hurts and trauma have made you retreat into yourself, into yourself, into yourself, versus that you should be retreating into God. That's the trick of the enemy. Look what the Word of God says in 2 Timothy 1 and verse 7 in the Message Bible. I'll let you get there because this one is good too. It says, and when I saw it, I was like, Lord, I am healed because this was me, shrinking violet, all dead, talking like this. Or not talking at all. I used to have a cousin. We used to walk down the streets of New York, and my favorite cousin, we would walk down, and she was bold. She was confident. I would want to be like her. And every step that I took, she would push my head up. Pick your head up. Literally, I would walk like this. Pick your head up. The whole way I was with her. The whole way. But here's what the Word of God says. It says, God doesn't want us to be shy with his gifts, but bold and loving and sensible. Whose gift is it? Say it again. Hey, listen. He says, show up bold. And if I'm not mistaken, it says, and loving. Because the gift that he put on the inside of you is what he needs to be a resource to others to show his love to them. But here you go, showing up like this. What will they get from that? Absolutely nothing. Absolutely not. Then we got unbelieving Ursula. Ursula, you know what? Ursula. Ursula. <laughs> Ursula. <laughs> everything she does, everything. And you know, it's a little different from unbelieving because the proof is right there. You, it's, it's right in your face. Like, Ursula, here it is. Okay, but what about? You don't know if you're, okay, but what about such and such? Okay, but what about? You just want to smack those people. <laughs> not you, me. Okay, but what about? Okay, but how come? It's right there, it's right there, Ursula. I just, yeah, I know it's right there, but what about? Girl, listen. Ursula. But here's the thing, that's a fake ID. Because here's the thing, why it shows up. Because you find it hard to accept the miraculous and supernatural aspect of God's power in your life. Belief. What is faith based on? Belief. His grace, his unmerited favor, well, it can't be that easy. Yes, it is. And that's the thing that the enemy is coming for. That's the thing he wants to come against. He wants you to show up less than so that your mindset is off, so that your belief is off, so that you move down that path that goes against what God has called you to, goes against who he's created you to be and how he's created you to go. Does that make sense? Man, listen. Mark 9, 24, it says, here's, and, and, and the guy, the father in the Bible, he says, Mark 9, 24, King James Version, it said, immediately the father of the child cried out. Y'all remember that? That child, the father, his child was sick. He said, immediately the father of the child cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe. Help my unbelief. He said, I believe. Just, just help, help the part of me that just can't, just fully submerge in Believing you. Then there's overthinking Olivia. Nobody found, anybody find herself in any of these that I'm talking about today? Did you, huh? Right, right. I just want to take a poll. Thank you for the one. Thank you for the two. Thank you for the three and the four and the five. Hey, blah, blah, blah. the truth is now about to set us free. Amen. All right. Overthinking Olivia. Here we go. Oh, Olivia's just like, she just, okay. She just keeps thinking on the same thing. Okay, I'm going to, okay. 
All right, and then she just keeps thinking over the same thing, doing the same thing over and over again, and again, and again, and again. Like so much so, to where you are paralyzed from doing what you're supposed to do. Like you're thinking it over so much. Let me start this business. Okay, I'm gonna start this business. Okay, I'm gonna do these business cards. Okay, I'm gonna get this website. Okay, I'm gonna, then you go back over. Okay, should I get the website? Okay, should I get the business card? Okay, should I get the bit? Then you step in again. Okay, let me start this business. Okay, let me start this shit around. Okay, let me get these business cards. Okay, let me. 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 Hey, okay, let me. Okay, let me. Okay, let me. Okay, let me. But you're still in the same spot. Thinking about the same thing. And you ain't got nowhere. And God has all the people set up for you already. And you're here. Let me. Okay, let me. Okay, let me. Okay, let me. Yeah, hey, let me. Okay, let me. And the enemy's like, yeah, let me. He's dancing with you. Let me. Okay, let me. Okay, let me keep you back. And let me. Let me. Let me keep you in bondage. Go on this side. Go on this side. Keep thinking. Same thought. Don't take on the words of the Lord that you got. Go on this side. Stay posted. Don't move and do that, girl. Go on this side. Go on this side. Stay right there. You're wrong. Overthinking because we get caught up in our thoughts, second guessing God's plan. How about that? We second guess God's plan and doubting our ability to discern His will. How does that even work? Don't it sound crazy when I'm reading it? I'm gonna I'm read it one more time. Tell me if this don't sound crazy. Overthinking because we get caught up in our thoughts, second guessing. God's plans, doubting our ability to discern his will. He who is greater, he who is mightier, he who sees the end from the beginning. And I'm doubting his plan and his will? These fake IDs that we're showing up, it is a fake ID that we're presenting for a temporary fix when he wants us really to show up in the grace ID. I'm not going to do the last one. Huh. And he's the example. Jesus is the perfect example. Jesus showed us what it meant to live with a grace ID. He was never swayed by others, opinions or pressures. I'm going to say that again. He was never swayed by others' opinions or pressures. He knew who he was and whose, W-H-O-S-E, he was. And it always led to great impact. Don't show this slide. Just keep it right here. Keep it right here. It always led to great impact. And I, you know, I was like, Lord, well, where did the impact go? Where was the impact? Check it out. The first one that I saw was when he was a little boy. You can change it to the next one now. He stayed behind to preach to the elders. When his parents came back to look for him, he told them who he was and what he was doing. Now, you know, you know this was back in the day. Because if, if my child got lost, amen, and I come looking for your tail, amen, and you put it to your lips to tell me who you were, what? And what you doing, first of all, we're supposed to be up here getting counted for the census so I don't get taxed so much. And you're about to tell me that I just backtracked three days to get your tail and you do what you belong to? First of all, if it was back, if it was me back in the day, I would be whooping that tail. <laughs> if it, uh, t- your name is Jesus. Well, my name is Alyssa and I'm about to whoop your tail. That's how you know this what? That's how you know he was Jesus. You got a little kid telling his parents, hey, you know, back up off me. I'm doing what my father told me. How about you got to look at all the levels of what happens there. You got a little kid, and then his adult parents have to submit to who is on the inside of him. That wasn't a little thing, just so you know. And here's the thing. The impact was so great, you got this little boy standing in the temple teaching the elders. 
Don't get it twisted what it is. The second one that I saw was in the Garden of the Sketch. Oh, here, he, he said, Luke 2 and 49, just want you to see where it's at. He said, why were you looking for me? That's what he answered to his mama. Why were you looking for me? Didn't you know that I had to be here dealing with the things of my father? <laughs> you know that was back in the day. <laughs> but here's the thing. He stood in all of who he was and whose he was. The second one I saw was in the Garden of Gethsemane. Jesus cried out to God to let the cup pass from him. you got to see how big these things are. He said, but in his love for mankind, he submitted to God's will. So look, I'm not saying that it's not going to be, it's going to be perfect. Even when we show up in who God created us to be, there will be trials, there will be situations, there will be crushing moments that we still have to make a decision, but Lord, and here's what it said. It said it in the scripture, Matthew 26 and 39. He says, going a little ahead, he fell on his face praying, my father, is there any way, get me out of this. Now, you know some people, you know some of y'all said that before. God, if you get me out of this right here, though, yeah. I will save you for the rest of my life. Yeah. I will dedicate my children to you, Lord God. Yeah. I will give all my money to the church. You are you Allah. You Allah. He said, going a little ahead, he fell on his face, praying my father, if there's any way, get me out of this. But please, not what I want. You. What do you want? How many know that moment in Gethsemane caused great impact? <laughs> and this one, on the cross. On the cross. Somebody say, on the cross. That thing took me so deep. Jesus made the ultimate sacrifice, securing our salvation. John 19 and 30, it said, Jesus said, it's done, complete, bowing his head. He offered up his spirit. My God, if that didn't make impact. And so let's look at it as we get ready to bring this to a close. What is the grace ID? The grace ID is rooted in who Christ says we are, not who the world says we should be. This is the ID, the identity that we present. Ephesians 2 and 10, it says, no, we neither make or save ourselves. That right there, you can go home on. We neither make or save ourselves. God does both the making and the saving, which means it's based on, again, what he has done and who he is. That's the identity that you take on. Amen. He creates each of us by Christ Jesus to join him in the work he does. This is the scripture. It says the good work he has gotten ready for us to do. He has gotten ready for us to do. He has gotten ready for us to do. He said a work we had better be doing. <laughs> Second Corinthians 5 and 17, it says, look, now we look inside, and what we see is that anyone, and say anyone, United with the Messiah gets a fresh start. That's hope. Gets a fresh start. The old life is gone, and new life versions mean a new life flourishes. Who are you in Christ? And you know, we realize, especially when we're working with our teens, being able to give them the language for that is important. Some adults don't have the language. We just say this I'm a child of God. <laughs> Who are you? I'm a child of God because we don't have the language, but I'm about to give it to you today. Amen. You are loved, Jeremiah 31 and 3, and I'm going to go through these. God told them, I never quit loving you and never will. Expect love, love, and more love. See, these are the things you have to renew your mind in, so when you show up, you show up, this becomes your power. This becomes your strength. This becomes your truth, Amen. so that you can lay down the fake ID and stand in the grace ID, which is not temporary. It is permanent. And it is based on and in all of who Christ is. That's why it's so powerful. That's why the enemy comes against your identity. He says, you are chosen. So far, you are loved. You are chosen, 1 Peter 2 and verse 9. But you are the ones chosen by God. Chosen for the high calling of priestly work. Chosen to be a holy people. God's instruments to do his work and speak out for him. Speak out for him. Speak out for him. Speak out for him. Amen. To tell others of the night and day difference he made for you. 
Doesn't the word say we live by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony? That's what's supposed to be happening, which why you can't be shrinking violent, which can't, why you can't be that cusser. Because the words that are coming out of you have to be the words of resource. Ah. He says to tell others of the night and day difference he made for you from nothing to something, from rejected to accepted. That'll take, that'll take the world if everybody stood up and showed up in that grace ID. Amen. You are forgiven. First John 1 and 9, on the other hand, if we admit our sins, make a, make a clean breast of them, he won't let us down. He won't let us down. He won't let us down. He'll be true to himself. He'll forgive our sins and purge us of all our wrongdoing. That's a promise. You are new. 2 Corinthians 5 and 17. And here's the thing. Sowing the word of God, it, it's, this is the part that, you know, once you lay the word of God, it's, it's a seed. It can't be taken out. Nobody can take this from us. It says, now we look inside, and what we see is that anyone, I think I read that one, is created new. The old life is gone, a new life version. Here's the one. You are victorious. Say victorious. victorious. Romans 8, 37 and 39. It says, none of this phases us because Jesus loves us. I'm absolutely convinced. This scripture, I love it. I'm absolutely convinced that nothing, nothing living or dead, angelic or demonic, today or tomorrow, high or low, thinkable or unthinkable, absolutely nothing can get between us and God's love because of the way that Jesus, our master, has embraced us. You can, you can do better than that. Me, the way my brain thinks, I was like, Lord, show it to me like this. So I wanted, it to, I wanted you to be able to see it side by side. Why I'm yelling like this over this fake ID versus grace ID. Fake ID is rooted in others' opinions and expectations. Grace ID is rooted in truth and grace. Fake ID changes based on circumstances and pressures. Grace ID, consistent and unwavering. Fake ID seeks approval and validation from the world. Grace ID brings peace, is confidence in God's love and acceptance. God's love and acceptance. Nobody don't want to be... God's love and acceptance. Fake ID creates insecurity and fear. I'm out of mystic. But grace ID brings peace and assurance. Faith ID leads to living a lie. Grace ID leads to live, living authentically. Here are the benefits of why this grace ID is so good, and I'm bringing it home. You can look up the scriptures when you get home. Say amen. amen. The benefit of embracing this grace ID is confidence in God's love. Everybody say confidence. Freedom from comparison. Looking to the left. Well, you know, they got some. And you know that. You're free from that. It's a wrap. It's over. Stand ten toes down in what you got and who you are. That's why it works. Does that make sense? Every time I come up here, I'm going to have blue hair. You understand what I'm saying? I'm going to show up as Alyssa. If I try to show up as somebody else, it's not going to work. Amen. Galatians 2 and 20. Check that out when you get to the house. Amen? Amen. There's peace in your purpose. I didn't say perfection. I didn't say it was going to be perfect, but I said it's peace. And the thing about peace is that it comes from within. Peace is a decision, too. Peace is a decision. But as you're moving in it, and you can read Philippians 4, 6 through 7, there's joy in the journey. Now, joy, what? It's what we know about him. So that's what keeps you on that journey. It may be, you might be feeling like you're getting busted in the head, knocked all over, but what I know about God is he's going to keep me. That car, boom, that wheel, oh, but what I know about God is that my life is redeemed from destruction. Yes. These are the benefits of why you show up in the grace ID. You, it also teaches us godly conduct. I got to read this one, because here's the thing. It'll teach you how to show up based on who he called you to be. 
It'll teach you the right desires. Here's the scripture. It says, Titus 2 and 11, God's readiness to give and forgive is now public. Salvation's available for everyone. We're being shown how to turn our backs on a godless, indulgent life and how to take on God-filled, God-honoring life. You can't do that by yourself. That's what grace does. Grace teaches you godly conduct so that you show up looking all right. Does that make sense? It says this new life is starting right now. When does it start? And is waiting our appetites for this glorious day when our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, comes again. Man, can we give God some praise right now? Let's affirm our faith in this thing that we just got. And every, oh, the whole lesson is about to be wrapped right in this confession. Say, Father, I thank you for my true identity in Christ. I am loved. Say it like you mean it. I am loved. I am chosen. I am forgiven. I am new. And I am victorious. I renounce the lies of the enemy and embrace the truth of who I am in you. I will live out my grace ID confidently knowing that I am fully accepted and loved by you in Jesus name. Amen. Come on and give God praise for that. You're supposed to. Look, when you see me in the hall, you be like, I'm showing up. That's our thing. I'm showing up. And I'm like, who you are? I'm like, I got that grace. I be. That's me. Listen, right about now. Woo. Hallelujah. 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 Trying to remember which way to go. I am messed up up here. But God is so great. At this time, why not show up in all of who we are in terms of completing our worship in this moment, yeah? Yes. Showing up, yeah. yeah. This is an opportunity, yes? yes? To show up in all of who you are. Lord, this is who I am. I am one who is loved. I am forgiven. I am new. I am victorious, and therefore, God, Everything I have is yours anyway. So even as you give, give based on just responding to that, responding on the fact that, Lord, you love me. And you can see on the screen here how you can live, give. You can give World Changers the amount to 74483, or you can call 1-866-477-7683. You can mail it into 2500 Burdett Road, College Park, Georgia, or you can go on the website to worldchangers.org or creflodollarministries.org. Raise your hand if you still need an envelope. I believe they're going to give on the way out. Yes? Or we can receive it now. Y'all let me know. Ooh, something about sowing that seed based on what you've heard. Amen. Father, we thank you for the seed right now that is being sown into the ground. Bless it, Lord, that it will go and grow in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And listen, this grace ID, we got to present it to you. If you're at home or if you're sitting in this audience and you've never received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, listen, this is that wonderful opportunity to take on and to receive the identity of Jesus Christ, the one who died on the cross for you so that you can be loved, you can be forgiven, you can be made brand new, you can be victorious. If that's you and if you're at home and you've never said it, if you've never received him, say this after me, Father... I believe that you died on the cross for my sins. That I am forgiven. That your blood that was shed washes away my sins. Past, present, and future. I receive you as my Lord and my Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. Man, give God praise for those who repeated that prayer for the first time. 
You got to do better than that. Yeah. And listen, if you're at home or if you're in here and you prayed that prayer of salvation with me today, I want you to text the word I'm saved, I am S A V E D, as one word to 51555. Give your name and your, your email address, and we will send you a free ebook as a gift to you today. Amen? Glory to God. Let us stand and uh, receive this blessing. Come on and give God praise. Hallelujah. Hey, lift your hands all over the building. God bless them beyond what they could ask or think. Take them to where they are going and bring them back again. Ministry angels, watch over them and keep them. I decree and I declare all is well in their life, Lord God, that they show up with the grace ID everywhere they go, that every person that is in their path, Lord God, that they will stand strong and bold in how you've called them to and who you created them to be. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. You are dismissed. God bless. Welcome to Grace Life 2024, the reunion. I love the Grace Life Conference because it's a place where the grace of God, the gift of God is being shared. If you're going to walk the Grace Life, there are going to be points at which you confront the legalism and the tradition even of your own upbringing. If you're so full of you, there is no room for the grace of God to come in and actually impact your life. He doesn't want you to have high self-esteem. He wants you to have high Christ-esteem. We're following the same trajectory, which is what? The whole world started off at the Alpha with everyone, and we got to believe it's going to an Omega with a heart of God and a vision of God that still includes everyone. We ought not think that the end of the thing is any different than how it began. What is your grace? You allow the uniqueness that God has put on the inside of you to govern your life and the things that you carry out on a day-to-day -day basis. We're talking about every day graciousness. I'm saying be who you are. I'm saying if it's in the Word, it's in you. Live it out, but live it out correctly. Men and women are not the same, but we are equal partners in the work of God. Grieving the Holy Spirit doesn't happen because you did something wrong. Grieving the Holy Spirit is when you believe less than what Jesus did for you, when you believe that what he did isn't enough. There ain't nothing like going through discomfort uh, with God on your side, depending on him. Because when you come out of that rough patch, you're going to be closer to him like never before. We're in a position to where our sons can watch us be a son to our father. That doesn't happen every single day. So now you're teaching them something, but your son can actually be in a position to watch you submit to the same things that you teach him, watch you submit to the same teaching with your father. When the speakers speak, they speak from different perspectives, and it just makes everything Dr. Dahl and Pastor Taffy teach come to life. The music is like electric. They just charge you up. It is great being in a room together, doing the same thing and on one accord. Our whole life has changed with the message of grace. It's one thing to get it virtually, but it's a whole nother just to be in the room in the same space, just feeling the presence of God. There's not one of the grace conferences that I've been to where my life wasn't changed forever, not one. Thank you for making the Grace Life Reunion one we will never forget. Now it's time for the new generation. Save the dates, July 10th through the 12th, and text Grace Life to 51555 or scan the QR code and register today. We'll see you in 2025.